I think um, you can sort of sense that vaccine hesitancy has sort of fallen off a cliff, certainly has in Sydney, and I think it's happening in other parts of Australia as well, and there's incredible demand. I mean, you just, you go about, you talk to people, and you do get that sort of sense that uh, people are really keen to get vaccinated. So 213,000 people vaccinated yesterday, the highest day ever, 84,000 in New South Wales, you know, pretty decent statistics. Earlier today, he also said that we can provide as much AstraZeneca as people request right now. So does Atagi's AstraZeneca advice need to change again? Look, I think it, the advice is OK. It's the interpretation of the advice. So you know, people under the age of 60 can have AstraZeneca vaccine, and, and they're specifically said in the context of outbreaks uh, that people should get along, have a chat to their GP about risks and benefits. And you know, I've been encouraged, as I've said before, by so many young people coming forward taking AstraZeneca, and I think that will continue to happen over the next month or so. Uh, and then we'll get an increase in supply of Pfizer and, and then Moderna and, and potentially even Novavax. So the back end of the year is looking incredibly good in terms of the supply side. We've got the demand side sorted out right now. Um, so as long as both those sort of forces uh, come together, I think, uh, in the last quarter of the year, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic we can get to at least 70 and hopefully 80% fully vaccinated by the end of the year. He also says he's open to offering cash payments for COVID-19 vaccinations at a later date. Now, the government uh, really, really slammed Labor's idea, uh, went very hard, actually, in its language for this $300 payment for everyone. But clearly this idea of cash payments potentially for some cohorts is still on the table. What do you make of it? Well, absolutely. I think you don't need them right now. I mean, the demand is so high that the, the time for incentives will be the, the final quarter of the year. And there will be a group of people that, that are cash incentives will be a, a really decent incentive. $300 is $300. And uh, I think we shouldn't uh, uh, put that to the side. I think we may need to use different levers. And I think that's one option. Absolutely. How about the critique that's been provided? In fact, the, the Minister Simon Birmingham put it to me that that it could, um, you know, really raise issues about conspiracies and concerns about why the government would pay to, to make you get vaccinated. Do you think that's true, that some people would look at it suspiciously? I don't think so. Um, I mean, there are other precedents in terms of public health interventions where uh, you know, those sorts of carrots have been used. So uh, I don't think it's unusual. And I, I think people would just look at it as the government's really keen to support the you know, vaccine uptake. Uh, particularly in uh, more marginalised populations. I mean, that sort of incentive may be incredibly important to get people to come along and, and take up the option. Mm. Now, there's evidence that younger people are peak spreaders of COVID-19 because of the kind of jobs that they do, the way they socialise and the way that they're actually happy and having a great time. Uh, does our vaccination strategy need to target these young people and, and how urgently does it need to do that? Look, I think the Doherty modelling was really good in the sense that there was a focus on opening up to all adults and that concept that um, there's two key things you want to do with the vaccination strategy. You want to, to protect the elderly particularly, uh, but we know from younger people becoming very severely unwell in New South Wales recently that you know, everyone's at risk. But um, clearly the transmission impact uh, would be greatest if you targeted 20, 30 something. So, I mean, the median age of cases in Sydney is, is in the low 30s uh, in this Delta wave. Um, so, yeah, I'm very much in support of a broad strategy to get high uptake across all the age groups that, that are eligible. We've seen a young man in his 20s die from the virus in Sydney southwest, which is a really, you know, obviously all lives are equal, but it is, does sort of bring home how incredibly serious this disease is, even for younger people, which I think sometimes is not really understood. Should we be concerned about young people particularly given they're not being given access to, to the vaccine. Uh, sorry, I should clarify, in... they are if they want to get AstraZeneca, but it is sure, hard to get sure. Pfizer. No, look, absolutely. I mean, the cases in intensive care at the moment, uh, several in their 20s and several in their 30s, clearly make that point. I think that individual case is an unusual case. Uh, it sounds like he was getting towards the latter part of his isolation period and he had a sudden event, sudden deterioration. So we won't know the details about that case until the coroner's report comes through. But it does highlight the fact that there can be very serious consequences in, in younger people. Um, and look, 
over the, as I said, the next several weeks, as many people as possible in Sydney should front up for vaccination and, and take whatever vaccine that they can get. Uh, both vaccines are incredibly effective and are very safe. Um, and, and you're seeing that start, 84,000 people in New South Wales being vaccinated yesterday. It's pretty, pretty amazing data.